morning. Today I'd like to uh, talk to uh, everyone out there, non-believers, believers, King James Bible believers, believers of new gods, which would be the New International Version, New American Standard Bible, a new, new Revised Standard Version, all these new Bibles, all these new translations that have come out. I'd like to talk to you today about, uh, and even if you think you're a true Bible believer, about the uh, post-tribulation uh, rapture versus the pre-tribulation rapture. Because you hear this all the time, uh, that we have to endure to the end, endure to the end. So we need to know what enduring to the end means and, and, and in what context God spoke it, Jesus himself spoke it, and who he spoke it to. And I think that's very important to, to do a study on this because I think there's a lot of confusion. And every time I look on YouTube, there's more and more and more channels saying, I once believed we would uh, be pre-trib, but now I know because I've studied and we're going through, ooh, turn my, we'll be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Now I believe in post-trib. Where do they get this from? Let's just take a look here. We're going to go to the, uh, the book of Matthew 10. Uh, especially verse 22 and but anyhow we're going to start at Matthew 10 1 because uh, I want to show you some stuff there in 10 1 Matthew 10 1 and when he called them now Matthew 10 like Matthew 24 talks a lot about the uh, the uh, tribulation that's going to be coming and we have to know who it's addressed to and so let's take it into context and when he called unto him his twelve disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. So who did he call? He called them to his disciples. Who did he give the power to cast out unclean spirits? His disciples. And all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now we can go on and read this, but let's just go down to verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and... commanded them, saying, Go not unto the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. This is not for Gentiles. This is not for us. This is not for Christians today that are not Jewish people. This book of Matthew 10, 24, pretty much, well, it's still the Old Testament, don't forget. Because until Jesus died, Jesus is speaking here, until Jesus died, until you see the death of the testator, a New Testament cannot begin, just like a will in a court of law. <clears throat> so Matthew 10, which is preached to the Jews, and we're not to go to the Gentiles in 1022. So uh, there are many Christians today that are laughing all the way to the bank, like Jim Baker, this Jim Baker guy. Man, he's on, 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 on YouTube and television, all these Christian TV programs. The collapse is coming. Doomsday clock for global market crash strikes one minute to midnight. You hear that, John? The Bible says you're going to throw gold and silver in the streets. Tomorrow, could, we could look back and say yesterday was the last day to order and get prepared. This offer comes with 22 buckets, plus a bonus of six additional buckets for a total of 28 buckets. I want to show you something. All this food is for a gift of $2,500. Eight years of bulk food. This is the, this is. What's he doing? He's selling enough food and supplies so you can endure to the end. Endure to the end? What? what? Because he's, now he's, he's moved to post trip belief. I think at one time he was, he was pre trip But the point being, he's making a lot of money selling this dehydrated food to last you for seven years. But let me ask you, Christians. Let me ask you people that believe in the post trip rapture. How are you going to get enough water to last seven years? You know, even three years. How can you have enough water to last three years? You think you can stock enough water to last for three years? At, at, at my house, I, I live off the grid, and I've got 22 Juro tanks of, of uh, about 600 gallons. And that's just to get me through one dry season. One dry season that takes me through. 22 Juro tanks of 600 gallons. Plus, I have an underground tank of 2,000 gallons. That only makes it just through the dry season to, to, to keep my family washed, bathe, drink, cook. Only through a dry season, and dry season is only two months. So think about that. How are you going to store three years of water to rehydrate your food? Oh, okay, let's think about that.
But just like you celebrate your birthday every year wow. on your birthday, I love that. Yes. most people may not realize it, but this coming Monday wow. is the very day Adam opened up his eyes for the first time in the Garden of Eden, and he proclaimed God as king. Wow. That's the anniversary That's of the creation of the world. Wow. Ten days later is Yom Kippur, the day of judgment. Do you all get that? Oh, you don't see him on you his get calendar that, for 500 more years. Do you all get that? Wow. Do you all get that? You know, the people, kind of, <laughs> we're wow, about a, we're, it, it, there's almost a month now before you can get your food. Wow, that's good. People are ordering food faster and faster. Wow. In a few hours, there's going to be an event take place. And you won't get food for six months to a year. We will be right back after this special message. And they, oh yeah, they're using the, the reason that Joseph uh, prepared for seven years. Therefore, we're going to take that as script for us today that we need to prepare for the seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob? Who is Jacob? Jacob was renamed Israel. Jacob is Israel. It's a time of Israel's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for us. It's not for Bible-believing Christians. So, if you notice in verse 1, Jesus was addressing the 12 disciples, right? We just read that. And in verse 5 and 6, uh, then, then I'm going to read 5 and 6 together for you now. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go ye, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There you go. Verse 6, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So how can that not be for uh, uh, for Gentiles today? It's true that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, for correction, for reproof. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we can use it, but who is it spoken to? So... If you go to, now to verse 18, we're going to pop down to verse 18 here. You will see the consequences of what the Jewish leaders thought of them preaching Jesus. And ye shall, let's go verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But then they, but when they deliver you up, take no thought of how ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour that ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Great. That's great for reproof and correction. And inspiration. And ye shall, verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Who was God? He was warning the Jewish people. He's warning the twelve disciples to go out to the house, of, the children of Israel, the house of Israel, and preach that they ha they'll have to endure to the end. Why? Because they rejected Jesus on the cross. They killed him. They rejected Jesus on the cross. So he who endureth, that endureth to the end shall be saved. So Bible believing Christians aren't to take that today. There's going to be a gathering. God's going to take us up. God's not going to put his wrath on his own body. We're the body of Jesus Christ. The Jewish people aren't. Not yet. Not yet. They're his people, his chosen people, but they're not a body of Christ yet unless they've truly been saved and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and repented and believed every word of this book, a King James Bible. And there is a King James Bible in Jewish. I have one. There's a King James Bible in German. I have one. Perfect one. There's a King James Bible in Hebrew and Greek. I have one. Perfect one. I'll, I'll, I'll show that to you. I'll show you a clip of that. Okay, I just wanted to quickly show you guys here. We have a complete Bible in, uh, in the Biblia Sacra. 
y preca et anglicana. So we've got in Hebrew, English, Old and New Testaments, King James. And you'll see this is, uh, here's the uh, Hebrew. Introduction. Then you'll see over here in Genesis, on one side we have English. I don't know how well you can see this here. On the other side we have Hebrew. English and Hebrew. In the New Testament, we also have in uh, over here we have German English King James, perfect, perfect translation. So the New Testament we have we have uh, Greek and English parallel. It's really hard to see without my glasses, so I hope you guys can pick this up. Greek and English on this side. Greek and English. Perfect translation. Perfect translation in German. Perfect translation in, in Hebrew. Perfect translation in Greek. King James Bible. We've got the Tyndale Bible from 1549. Staten Vertelling in Dutch. If we go to uh, Isaiah, German, Hebrew, Greek, we have perfect. Uh, Spanish, I have perfect, uh, King James translation. The, the, the Staten Vertelling is a very good translation, but unfortunately there are some errors in it. Like over in uh, Daniel 3.25, it says, uh, uh, a son of the gods. And then Isaiah 14.12, Isaiah 14.12, it says, uh, who sit he out the himmel ha fallen mo o morgenstar so uh yeah. morning o oh morning star how they're fallen from heaven is that oh lucifer how they're fallen from so there's definitely some mistakes i found about 40 mistakes in the staten vertelling so it's not a perfect translation but it's the closest we have to king james in the uh, dutch and this would be the the Staten Vertelling. The Gens Gilke Schreef, Old and New Testament. Staten General. Staten General. De Vereniging Nederlanden. So clearly the Apostle dealing with the Jewish people here, it has nothing to do with us Gentiles. Yet all post-trib followers use this verse and went over in Matthew 24, which I'll show you in a bit. Use this verse as their mindsets that Bible-believing Gentiles must go through at least the three, first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble, which they call the Great Tribulation. By the way, there is no the Great Tribulation in this book. There's tribulation, yeah. I get tribulation now. I get it from my own family. <laughs> There's, we have brothers and sisters over in countries like Iraq and stuff that get slaughtered. They're already in the in tribulation, but the great tribulation. There's no such thing. No such thing. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. So, well, today I can tell you with all certainty that these believers, these believers in the post-trib rapture, I can tell you with all certainty, based on the words in this book, are not ready to meet Jesus Christ face to face. You guys aren't ready. Mm -mm. Why? You're ignoring the following scriptures. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, 13, 6-7. Okay, Isaiah 13, 6-7. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Every man's heart shall melt? Every man? So every man that's still here that hasn't been gathered by Jesus Christ, first the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we will be to meet uh, the Lord in the air. 
Anyone that hasn't done that, every man's heart shall melt. Are you a man? Woman, mankind. That includes you, if you're here. Every man's heart shall melt. That includes you, if you're still here. So, I want to today talk a little bit too about uh, what we call the rapture, which is actually the gathering in the scriptures. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the defendant and why. Post-tribbers who said, I've gone to post-trib now, I believed in pre-trib, but I've studied and I've gone to post-trib. Well, how about, how about, let's just say, I'm going to defend a secret rapture. They say it's a secret rapture. Oh, a secret rapture? There's no secret rapture in the Bible. Let me show you, let me show you a couple of secret raptures. We're going to go to uh, John. Uh, we go to the book of Acts. We're going to go to the book of Acts first. Uh, did Jesus go up, ascend before Acts chapter 1? Did he go up and ascend before Acts chapter 1? Well, back in John. Okay, let's just look. Yes, he did. And it was known only by a woman. You guys, you guys ever, ever, ever read these scriptures? I'll show you. It was known only by a woman. As such a woman, Bride of Christ, a.k.a. that's us true Bible believers, Bride of Christ, we're as like a woman unto, 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 unto Jesus. <clears throat> if we look at uh, it's stated in there, uh, a stumbling block that must first be taken up out of the way. Back at Isaiah, a stumbling block that must first be taken up out of the way? What is that? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. True Bible believers today. People that believe every word of this book. I'm going to show you how other languages that don't have this book completely, how some other languages will have, uh, will also be coming up with us. Okay. Isaiah 57, 13 to 14. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them away, vanity shall take them. And when he that putteth his trust in me, in me, his words, he's the word, right? Putteth his trust in me, shall possess the land, and shall inherit my holy mountain, and shall say, cast ye up, Cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. So he's, he's talking about his people, the Jews, and a stumbling block that's in their way. What stumbling block would be in the way of the Jewish people? Well, let's just take a look here. Uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty three. we have to go to for that. 1 Corinthians one twenty three. 1 Corinthians one twenty three. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. That's us, guys. True Bible believers. Uh, Corinthians 1.18. Let me confirm that. Because who, who are these Greeks foolishness? Unto the Greeks foolishness. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I want you to pay very close attention to those words. Unto us who are, unto us which are saved. If you go to First Corinthians one eighteen, go go to uh, Bible Gateway on on the internet, or or if you have your Bible and you open the First Corinthians one eighteen, and it does not say but unto but unto us which are saved, which the NASB doesn't, the NIV doesn't. All the new Bibles, the new Bible versions don't. New gods. Go back to Judges, it's new gods. And they don't. They don't say that. You're not saved. You're being saved. Us who are being saved, your, 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 your book says. Your book. So it's not God's words. See? <clears throat> By the way, uh, the Holy Ghost will always lead you to all truth. Now, if the Holy Ghost, when you're saved, leads you to all truth... That means you're going to be confronted with certain issues like the pre-trib, post-trib. And if you're not led to all truth, the pre-trib, which I'm showing you today, you're not saved. You're following another ghost, another spirit. Okay, now we're going to study that, and I'll show you that. But uh, unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So, <clears throat> if your Bible says, unto us which are being saved, it is the power of God, how do you have any power of God if you're just being saved? Unto us which are saved, this is the power of God. Your Bible has no power. Your book has no power. Sure, you might deceive a lot of people and gather them together with your false Christ, your false Bible, 
but it has no power. John 20, 11 to 18. Now this is, uh, uh, we're, we talked a little bit about, about John and before Acts, if, if, if there was a secret rapture. I'm going to show you it right here. John 20, 11 to 18. But Mary stood with out uh, at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. Now note, um, this Mary that's being spoken of here is, is she was called Magdalene. And in Luke uh, 8, 1 to 18, she was called, called Magdalene. And uh, it's not the Mary, the mother of Jesus, by the way. Uh, she's the one that had uh, all the devils inside of her. Eight devils, I think it was, that Jesus cast out. So uh, if you go into Luke 8, 1 to Luke 8, 1 to 18. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tithings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. So there was twelve. Twelve disciples there. And a certain woman which had been, uh, verse 2, Luke 18, 2. And a certain woman which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils. So it was seven devils that uh, were, were cast out of her. <clears throat> and verse 12, And seeing two angels in white sitting, so this is John, uh, John 20, 12, And seeing two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, were where the body of Jesus had lain. Verse 13, John 20. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She says unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when Jesus, uh, no, uh, verse 14, And when she had said, thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Verse 15. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing that he was he be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Wow, she must have been strong. She picked Jesus up to take him away. Uh, Jesus, uh, I'm sure she would have got some help. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself, and he saith, and she saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go unto my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples, you see, Jesus hadn't ascended yet. She couldn't touch him. Wow. So he went up. Jesus had to ascend to come back down to meet the disciples in the book of Acts. There's a secret rapture of Jesus Christ. That's a, a, an example for us, guys. Inspiration for us. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she has seen the Lord and that he has spoken these things unto her. So to a woman, secret rapture. Now let's go to the book of Acts. And see what happened. them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it 
and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.